We're not being called just to be here on this earth. Yeah. We do have work to do here uh -huh. while we're living in this world. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the ultimate purpose of God is I'm calling you as my people to my home, heaven, to mm -hmm. eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen. One of the things that I want us to consider and think about when we read this particular passage, Hebrews 3, verses 1 and 2, think about this being read in eternity. Mm -hmm. Was. This is like God saying, when everything is said and done, my son, the apostle and the high priest of our confession, he was faithful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Moses, yeah. he was faithful. Yeah. It's important that we think about that. So we consider Christ. Mm -hmm. We think about these things. And it's what it says here in this passage. Mm -hmm. We are to consider him. And throughout the scriptures, uh, this is not just a glancing look. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're driving down the highway or the interstate and you mm -hmm. see something, you go on. It's stopping, it's taking it in, it's mm -hmm. looking, it's considering yeah. deeply who Christ is. Yeah. Yeah. What he has done. We desire to do this. We yes. enjoy doing this. Yes. We yes. wait in great expectation for the appearing of Christ. Because we know when he appears, we will be in eternity uh -huh. with him. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, first thing that I want to mention as far as a, a main point, God appointed his son, Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. As it's been uh, stated already, another way of thinking of appointment is ordained. Uh -huh. Ordained. He ordained his son. When did this appointment take place? It took place in eternity before creation. Mm -hmm. It was in eternity. And I think this is very important for us to always think about God made a covenant with the Word who was God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh, if you have access to the Word of Truth uh, messages and the videos, mm -hmm. Brother Gibbon, his, mm -hmm. his series on the New Covenant, mm -hmm. he talks about it being a unilateral covenant. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't mess up. Yeah, right. He's perfect. Yeah. God knew and Jesus knew and the Holy Spirit knew everything would come to pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, if God makes a covenant with us because we're fleshly, we're just human, we're, we're uh, well, just the scripture shows us, mm -hmm. we're not going to keep it. Mm -hmm. That's why our faith is in Christ. We look yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. So what was Christ appointed to be and to do? Well, he's been appointed as the apostle of our confession or profession. Uh -huh. He is appointed to be the great high priest of our confession. And with this appointment comes holy work. Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't come here for a vacation. Yeah, that's right. He didn't come here just for his enjoyment. He came here because that's part of God's eternal purpose. Amen. He came yeah. here so that there would be a day come when we could be with him and the Father and the Holy Spirit in eternity. Mm -hmm. Now, Christ was faithful to God who appointed him. Amen. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to mention here, and it's in, in our passage, Moses. Moses is used here as a type and shadow of Christ. Yes. And it's important that we think about this. There's actually two things that are mentioned that are a type and a shadow. What about Moses being faithful in all of God's house? Well, God's church. Uh -huh. Christ has been faithful. Yes. Moses points to that. The house points to the church. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the Lord says in Numbers chapter 12 and verse 7 of Moses. He is faithful in all my house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Think about this. This is before the Holy Spirit was given. That's right. Yeah. This is before the new covenant mm -hmm. that we live in. Mm -hmm. It really upsets me sometimes when I talk to people and they give me all these excuses. Well, this is just the way I am. Mm -hmm. I can't do any better. Well, on Judgment Day, Moses is going to stand up and say, Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was faithful in all of God's house. He's yeah. recorded it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Hebrews 11 and 23 through 29 tells us by faith Moses lived for God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's the faith. We talk about faith. What do we mean when we talk about faith? Well, Hebrews 11, 6. He believed that God is. Yes. He believed that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. Amen. Moses knew that. Mm -hmm. He saw that. All yes. of Hebrews chapter 11 gives us example after example of those who live that out. In Exodus 40 and verse 16, it says this. We have the outworking of the faith of Moses. Thus Moses did, according to all that the Lord had commanded Amen. him, so he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He did. Just taking the time to read about God's message that he gave to Moses. He gave him the law. He gave him the plan of the tabernacle. And Moses did all mm -hmm. of that. 1 Corinthians 4.2 says this, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Mm -hmm. We need to be those who are also included in Hebrews chapter 11. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. need to be those who see that God is and he is rewarder of those who diligently seek him more and more and more. Now, in the four Gospels, we see the faithfulness of Christ. Mm -hmm. We see how he lived. We see how he conducted himself. Christ himself as a man, the man Christ Jesus, he believed that God is. Mm -hmm. That's important to think about. He believed that God is. He trusted him. You know, Brother Bob mentioned that. Do you trust? Well, yeah, Jesus trusted the Father mm -hmm. every time. Yeah. Every time. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think about this and we consider this, I want us to note something about the life of Christ. Luke 5.16 tells us this about Christ. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Mm -hmm. I never noticed this before, and I've studied what Jesus teaches about prayer. I've studied the life of, of prayer that Jesus uh, had. The word prayed in the four Gospels always refers to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. He was one who would go into the wilderness and he fellowshiped with the Father through prayer. Yes. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. He had that sweet hour of prayer mm -hmm. as that hymn. Uh, so wonderfully tells us. Amen. Out of this, he was strengthened to do the will of his Father. Amen. Amen. He was a man. He was weak, and he needed to be strengthened, and his Father strengthened him. For us, we need to remember as we fellowship with Christ and the Father through the word, prayer, and fellowship of the saints, we will be strengthened by the Holy Spirit yep. to do the Father's will. Mm -hmm. Just like we're doing this weekend. We're coming together and we're fellowshipping with the saints. We will leave here on Sunday evening different people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different people mm -hmm. will be stronger, will be able to do more for the Lord. And it's not that we weren't doing enough already, mm -hmm. but we're going to see things even clearer than we already see things. Mm -hmm. We're going to understand God better. We're going to understand Christ better. Mm -hmm. Today, as Christ is seated at the right hand of God's throne, he is experiencing his reward. The reward for being faithful. He prays about this in John 17, 5, and this is what he said. The glory which he had with God before the world. Amen. As the man Christ Amen. Jesus, mm -hmm. he has his reward. Mm -hmm. Next point here. Mm -hmm. Christ was faithful to God as the apostle of our confession, our profession. Uh -huh. Now, when we think about profession and confession, simply it's this, Matthew 16 and verse 16, where Peter, very, very clearly says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. He is the anointed Son of the living God. He has been anointed by the Holy Spirit. We are those who believe this to the saving of the soul. Mm -hmm. We believe that Christ 
is the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Christ is God's apostle. Uh -huh. I don't want to make Amen. that clear. That's He's right. God's apostle. He's the apostle. Amen. Uh -huh. There's other apostles that are mentioned in the Bible, but Christ is at the top of the line. Amen. Amen. He was yes. sent to us for a particular yes. purpose to bring many sons to glory. Amen. Amen. That's what God's doing. Bringing many Amen. sons to glory. There's two, there's more than two, but there's two prophecies that I want us to consider in Isaiah that God would send his son. I think it's very important for us to see that in the Old Testament, these things have been spoken of. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 48, 16 says this, Come near to me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, I was there. Mm -hmm. Don't miss this next part. Mm -hmm. And now the Lord God and His Spirit have sent me. Mm -hmm. Amen. An mm -hmm. apostle is sent. That's right. Sent with a message. Uh -huh. A message from God. Isaiah, he had, is in a category of an apostle. He had a message, God's message. He was sent to proclaim it. The second prophecy. This is one we're very familiar with. Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. I love this. I love this passage. I love where its fulfillment is found in Luke 4. Mm -hmm. And it says this. <coughs> the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, mm -hmm. because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of God to comfort all who mourn mm -hmm. to console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and I love this next part mm -hmm. that they us, mm -hmm. that they may be called trees, or as the New American Standard says, oaks mm -hmm. of righteousness, yeah. mm -hmm. the planting of the Lord, that yeah. he may be glorified. Yeah. Amen. 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 I love that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now here's the more important part of this, Luke chapter 4. Picture this. Here's Jesus. He's in Nazareth. This is Luke 4, verses 16 through 21. He, as his custom was, went into the synagogue. Uh -huh. It's like Jesus came here and he's with us. Mm -hmm. He went into the synagogue because that's where all the Jewish people went. It was mm -hmm. a Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And he stood up and read. Yeah. <clears throat> he took the scroll of Isaiah, and that's where it was supposed to be read that day, and he read it. Mm -hmm. And he opened up the book, the scroll. He found the place where it was written, and he quotes. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 3. I don't have time to go into all the details of this passage, mm -hmm. but note this about what Jesus says here and what Isaiah 61 says. The Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus while he was here. Yeah. Uh -huh. He was Spirit-filled. That's right. Amen. He was filled with God's Spirit. Uh -huh. Amen. And here's why he was filled. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're all poor before we come yeah. to know uh -huh. Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm. And we, he has anointed his son to preach the good news to each one of us. Amen. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. If you've got a broken heart, Jesus mm -hmm. knows how to heal it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He's our great high priest. He's our apostle. He uh -huh. knows how to do these things. Amen. Mm -hmm. He does it all the time. Uh -huh. It's easy for him to do. Amen. He proclaims liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Yeah. Have we ever uh -huh. been a captive? Have we ever been blind? He knows how to give us sight. He knows how to free us. Mm -hmm. Amen. He can set us at liverty. Wonderful to know that. Amen. He proclaims the acceptable year uh -huh. of the Lord. Now verse 20 here in Luke 4. Mm -hmm. He rolls up that scroll and closes the book. He gave it back to the attendant. He sat down. Mm. Picture this. He yeah. sat down. It's like he went over here and he sat down. <laughs> and then... 
when he did that, huh. and I want to read what it says here, and all the eyes, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Yeah. Verse 21, and he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Yeah. Amen. 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 Today. Uh huh. Amen. Not tomorrow. Yeah. Not, not ten years from now, but today, <laughs> what I just read is fulfilled in your hearing. That's mm. our apostle. That's Amen. right. That's God's apostle. That's uh -huh. what he does. Mm -hmm. Now, the Gospel of John records the fact that Jesus was sent by God to us. Mm -hmm. I really had difficulty with this part, not because I couldn't find anything. If you've read and you're a student of the Gospel of John, there's so much there <laughs> yeah. that talks about him being sent. Uh -huh. The four Gospels talk about it again and again and again. John 3.34, John the Baptist, he says this, and he's talking about Christ. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, uh -huh. for God does not give the Spirit by measure. Yeah. John the Baptist had no problem <coughs> with who Jesus is and giving Jesus the floor, mm. so to speak. Amen. Amen. Um, he got out of the way. He knew yes. he'd done his part. I'm the forerunner. Now the one who I made the path for, here he is. Uh -huh. Jesus, God's son. Amen. His ministry may have been as short as six months mm -hmm. or as long as a year, somewhere in between there. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. His yep. ministry was pretty much over. It's interesting to think about that. And I don't want to digress too much here, but in certain churches, uh, preachers are in competition with one another about who's going to do all the speaking, who's mm -hmm. going to do this. Well, John the Baptist didn't have a problem with that at all. Yeah, amen. Now, John 4, 34, Jesus says this. And, and one of the things about the Gospel of John, mm -hmm. Jesus a lot of times addresses the religious leaders. And when they would take and come against him, and this is one of the observations I've noticed, especially in John, mm. he would just pour the gas on. Yeah. <laughs> he just keep it. He didn't worry about it. He kept preaching the truth, telling the truth, telling what God wants done. John 4, 34, Jesus says this, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he did. He went to the cross and he finished the work of salvation. That doesn't mean he's completely done with everything God wants him to do. Our next point, he being our great high priest, is a continuation of that uh -huh. work but from heaven. Yeah, amen. From the eternal throne room. See, God's work is that of once again bringing glory to his name mm. through those who believe in him and Christ whom he sent. Yes. It's important for us to remember that. Again, God is bringing many sons to glory through his yeah. son. Amen. There's a day coming when we're going to stand in the presence of God and mm -hmm. Christ and the Holy Spirit in all their fullness. Mm -hmm. Right now, the way we are, if we see in the fullness of God's glory, we die. Mm. It'd kill us. <laughs> That's why Moses was put by God in the cleft of the rock. Right, yeah. He protected him with his hand. Uh -huh. Just let him, let him see a glimpse <laughs> yeah. of his glory. That transformed him. Just yeah. a glimpse mm -hmm. of it. Just a little piece of it. John 5, 24, Jesus says this. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word believes in him who sent me has everlasting life uh -huh. and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. I love that. Amen. What a marvelous promise mm -hmm. that we have been given. If we hear the words of Jesus, if we believe in Him mm -hmm. who sent Him, God who sent His Son, we have everlasting life. Yep. We're not going to come into judgment. Mm -hmm. We're going to experience the resurrection of life. 
Yeah. Not the resurrection of damnation. Mm -hmm. Very important for us to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, John 6, there's many times that, that, that Jesus uh, addresses these things that he's been sent. I just want to share this, John 6, 57. Jesus says this, As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, mm -hmm. so he who feeds on me will live because of me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We want to live, we've got to feed on Christ. Amen. 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 We've got to fellowship mm -hmm. with him. We've got to be in his word. We've got to be with the brethren. It's important that people think of these things. I, I deal with, a lot of times, I deal with people that they give me all kinds of excuses. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, it's like Brother Bob mentioned in his message. Dangerous to question God. Mm. It's important that we just listen to Him and we take Him for what He says mm -hmm. and we believe Him. It's very important, and I've noticed this too in the in the Gospels, particularly, especially John. Not only are we to believe in God and Christ and the Holy Spirit, but we need to believe God. Mm -hmm. We need to believe Christ. We need to believe the Holy Spirit. How many times throughout the, I'll use, for lack of a better term, the New Testament, says the Holy Spirit says, or like Book of Revelation, the Holy Spirit says to the churches, Amen. Mm -hmm. need to listen. Mm -hmm. It's very important that we mm -hmm. do that. Now, John 17, verses 3 and 4, Jesus says this. This is this wonderful prayer. It's a priestly prayer that he prays. He says this, I love this, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Yeah. This is eternal life, mm -hmm. knowing God, mm -hmm. Amen. knowing God. Right. Yes. It's not a theory. It's That's not right. To teach that it's a theory. It's just an idea. It's the person of Christ. Yes. He gives us access to the person of God. Yeah. Very, very wonderful to think about that. John 17, verses 6 through 8. Jesus says this in that same prayer I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. Mm -hmm. They were yours. Yeah. You gave them to me. They have kept your word. Yeah. Now they have known all the things which you have get, that you have given me are from you. For I have given them the words which you have given me. They have received them and have known surely that I came forth from mm -hmm. you. And they have believed that you sent me. Yeah, amen. Wonderful to think about that. Mm-hmm. That's that, that chapter 17 in John, and that's a chapter we just need to let it kind of soak in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. read it off, and learn about how Amen. Jesus prayed to the mm -hmm. Father. And then as I close this point, before I move on to the, the next part, John 20 and verse 21, Jesus said this. He says this to the apostle. Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Mm -hmm. We have a message. That message, as the Apostle Paul tells us, is that the message of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. We're ambassadors of Christ. That's right. We have all the resources we need as we're sent by Jesus, mm -hmm. as we're sent by God to proclaim the gospel to the saints and to those who aren't saints. Next point, Christ was faithful to God as the great high priest of our profession or confession. Mm -hmm. Again, this, <laughs> it's not because I had a lack of information, there's just so much about this. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a couple of prophecies mm -hmm. that I think are very important, or, or three actually, important prophecies mm -hmm. to keep in mind as Christ being faithful to God as the great high priest. Mm -hmm. 
Genesis 14, 18. You're very familiar with this. Then Melchizedek, king mm -hmm. of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and he was the priest of the God most high. Amen. Mm -hmm. Again in Psalm 110 and verse 4, mm -hmm. the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. And then I love Zechariah 6, verses 12 and 13. Then speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch. Mm -hmm. From his place he shall branch out. He shall build the temple of the Lord. Yes, he shall build the temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule on his throne. So he shall be a priest on his throne. Council of peace shall be between them both. Yeah. Amen. Christ is that branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are that temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what he's building. That's who he's building. Mm -hmm. He's bearing Amen. the glory. But notice this. And I know this is probably very familiar to all of us. He's a kingly priest. Mm -hmm. He sits Amen. on a throne. Yes. He's the king of kings, the Lord uh -huh. of lords, but he's also the priest. Amen. Yes. He's a great high Amen. priest. Yes. You never see that in the scriptures except for Melchizedek uh -huh. as being the type of Christ who's going to be in the future. Yes. Uh -huh. You don't see that anywhere else. What yeah. happened to Saul, King Saul when he tried to do both? Uh -huh. yep. He lost his kingdom. That's right. He lost his kingdom. So the fulfillment of these passages really are found, and I focus this just in Hebrews. Uh, I love Hebrews. Uh, that is a foundational book. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say yeah. this. When you read the very first word in chapter 1, it uh -huh. says God. Uh, that's right. God's speaking. Yeah. <laughs> and what's he doing? He's holding up his son, Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Think of Christ as a huge diamond. Mm. That diamond's got facets on it. That's right. Every time you turn that diamond, there's another facet of Christ. Amen. Amen. There's Amen. another facet Amen. of Christ. Yes. There's enough, you, you can't run out of facets. <laughs> That's right. Amen. 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 Because of who Christ is. Because of what he's done. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 2, verses 17 through 18. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made mm. like his brethren. That's comforting to know. Yes. Amen. Here's the important part of this. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God. Mm -hmm. To make propitiation for the sins of the people. Mm -hmm. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think a personal question for each one of us is who do we go to when we're tempted? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we go to Christ? He knows how to help us in temptation. Amen. 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 He knows. He gives us, a, 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 and over the past couple of weeks, I've tried to think of how to say this, and I'll try to say it in this way. For each one of us, He knows how to tailor His mercy yes. to us. Amen. 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 So that it touches us yes. in a particular way. That's right. Same thing with salvation. Mm -hmm. It's very important in the grace of God. He knows how to do these things. Amen. There's no sense in arguing with him or yeah. thinking that, well, is there somebody better who can do this? Mm -hmm. Who knows how many old covenant priests there were? Mm -hmm. They couldn't do it. That's right. But Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Amen. One of the things there at Lewisburg, I, I'm about done going through a preaching series of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. One of the things I reminded us there at the, the church is simply this. Christ is the only one who knows how to get us from here, this earth, mm -hmm. to heaven. Amen. 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 I'm sorry, I can't do it. You mm -hmm. can't do it. Mm -hmm. But Christ can. Amen. Amen. The faith Amen. is in Him. Amen. Now, as we think about these things, mm -hmm. there's another passage in Hebrews. It's chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest mm. who has passed through the heavens. Yeah. <laughs> 
passed through the heavens. Yeah. He's gone to the heaven mm -hmm. yeah. where the throne's at, yeah. where his father's throne is at, where his throne is at. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Revelation chapter 3 tells us that if we're faithful to the end, we'll sit on that throne with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Yeah. What a wonderful gift that we have been given him in Christ Jesus. So he's passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or our confession. Mm -hmm. Hold it fast. Yeah. yeah. Don't let go of it. Amen. That Christ is the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, how blessed this is that Christ is not a sinner. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because he was without sin, mm -hmm. he could be and is our great high priest. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because of this, verse 16 tells us, Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace, yeah. that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in that time of need. Mm -hmm. Now Hebrews 5 talks about the, the quotes that I mentioned. You are my son today. I have begotten you. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Talks about those. Those are mentioned. Uh, very important to, to always note when these things are, are recorded in the New Covenant or the New Testament. Very, very important also to note that the people that the Holy Spirit was speaking to in the first century, and this is uh, chapter 5 and verse 11, says this, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain mm -hmm. since you have become dull of hearing. Mm -hmm. Dealing with people who have become dull of hearing. I don't sense that with this group. You wouldn't be here if you were dull of hearing. But we probably know some people who are dull of hearing. Well, again, who's the answer to this dull of hearing? How can we hear again? Christ. Yeah, yeah. Amen. He's the answer. Yes. He's the ointment that we need. That's right. Now, Hebrews 6, verses 19 and 20 tells us this. This hope. You have this hope. It's an anchor of the uh -huh. soul. Uh -huh. An anchor keeps us stable. Uh -huh. This hope that comes from God, uh -huh. who's in his Christ and is Christ, it's sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. That's right. That's what Christ did. He went to the heavenly presence. Uh -huh. Went to that heavenly throne room. He has entered as the forerunner for us. Even Jesus, having become high priest forever, mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. eternally, yeah. according to the order of Melchizedek. That's mm -hmm. the purpose of Melchizedek, mm -hmm. to show us the type of Christ mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's eternal. He's forever. And it goes on, and I'll just, I'll just mention this, Hebrews 7. It's very important to note there, again, it talks about the many priests. Uh, they died, and they died, and they died. But notice 724 in mm -hmm. Hebrews. But he, yeah. because he continues forever, has an unchangeable yeah. priesthood. Amen. 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 It's very important for us to think often of these things. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, verses 19 and 22 says this. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. by a new and living way, Amen. which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, mm -hmm. having a high priest over the house of God, yeah. and that's drawn near with a true heart and full assurance, mm -hmm. having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed mm -hmm. with pure water. Yeah. Amen. 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 So just some concluding thoughts here. Mm -hmm. As we looked at this, we can see from the Holy Scriptures that Christ mm -hmm. is the apostle and the high priest of our profession, and he was faithful to him 
who appointed him. Mm -hmm. He completed everything that needed to be done. All that is left is when he returns and he gathers us together and he takes us to that eternal rest. Mm -hmm. It's because of Christ's faithfulness to God we who are in Christ can enter God's rest. Yeah. It's eternal, this rest that's talked about here in Hebrews. So we press on toward the goal for that upward call mm -hmm. of God in Christ Jesus. There's a day coming. We're going to see God. We're going to see Christ. We're going to see the Holy Spirit in the fullness of their glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to close with this passage. This is Hebrews <clears throat> Excuse me, this is Hebrews 2, verses 10 through 13. I love this passage. Part of it is a quote from the Old Testament, a, a couple of quotes. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, mm -hmm. to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Mm -hmm. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. Mm -hmm. We're brought together in Christ. For which reason he is not, and this is Jesus saying this, mm -hmm. for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Amen. 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 Verse 12 and 13. Saying, I love this, I will declare your name to my brethren. Mm -hmm. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Amen. And again, mm -hmm. I will put my trust in him. Yes. Amen. Trusted the Father. Amen. And again, I love this next part. Here I am, mm. and the children, that's us, whom God has given me. Yes. Amen. Amen. There's a day coming, Christ mm -hmm. will gather us all together. That's right. Yep. And he's going to present us, as mm -hmm. it says in Colossians some other places mm -hmm. to the Father. Amen. Amen. We're going to be that bride who is spotless, the mm -hmm. church who is spotless and without mm -hmm. blemish. We have a wonderful and blessed Savior, Christ mm -hmm. Jesus, yeah. the Apostle and the Great High Priest of our confession. Mm -hmm. Amen.